Welcome back to Snipe Hunt, your frightening folklore podcast. I am your host, Darren Young. And I am also <laughs> your host, Gary Clevenstein. That's right, and this is a bonus episode, sort of a follow-up to, our, well, not sort of, a follow-up yeah. to the Crescent Hotel episode. Uh, sorry, I don't really have a real episode to put together. I've, I've actually been really busy at work. It's all good. Which is strange, because I'm usually never busy at work. Because we need to talk about this. We do need to talk about this. There's so I much was, to talk about. I was falling asleep on the actual... He was literally falling asleep recording the episode, because <laughs> we were doing it between 2 and 3 in the morning. And this and it was funny, because I was like, we should record the episode now. And the guy was like, why? Are we, are we in a hurry or something? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? And I was like, okay. Well, So we wandered around a little bit more. And I was like, Gary, let's go and record the podcast. And you're like, dude, we're not in a hurry. We're not, yeah, in a hurry. we're not in a hurry. And then we finally get to record the podcast. He's like falling asleep. During, and in my head, I'm like, Gary, are you in a hurry or something? During, during his reads, I just kept nodding off. And I was like, what the hell's happening? <laughs> to be fair, he did hear all that information before as we just got done with the ghost tour. Right. Our, sorry, our VIP mm, ghost tour. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's get into a uh, little bit of our stay at a haunted hotel. Um, first, the drive up there. Um, I got a little car sick. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, did you? Yeah. You yeah. never said anything. Yeah. Oh, uh, you did. You yeah, did. Yeah, you I did ask you me to take something. an out. Yeah, you did ask me to. I think I said something like, "Why about, we have to take an curvy right. way?" Right. You didn't. Yeah. And I'm not totally sure if there's a uncurvy way to. I don't. I don't believe there probably is. <laughs> but no, it, it was a good time. We listened to some uh, Big J Okerson. Big J Okerson. I Big love J. him. Okerson. Hey, I don't want to interrupt you, yeah, but I've yeah, noticed yeah. that sometimes when I talk, a little red light comes on. What does that mean? <laughs> I think that that's the, uh, it's either... Does that mean I'm getting too loud? It means you're getting way too... No, it should be fine. No. Just, okay. Just ignore it. Sorry. I so just... I didn't... That's, that mixer is possessed, so it just does whatever it I wants. didn't want to blow people's ears. Uh, I had to go buy this one because they were like selling like a haunted mixer, and I was like, well, mm. I can't get... I shouldn't get any other mixer right. for this podcast. Right. But yeah, it was a pretty good drive up there, and then... Of course, it was a nightmare trying to get through the uh, the city itself, especially downtown, because the roads are so narrow and so crooked, and it's ridiculous. And if you listen to the Crescent Hotel episode, which why would why wouldn't you have if you're listening to this one? Um, am I saying that? If you go to Eureka, yes. point being, if you go to Eureka, it's an amazing place. It is a great place, yeah. But traffic, if 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 you're traveling a certain way and somebody's coming the other way, you might as well forget it. Yeah. You're, you're stuck. You might as well just get a scooter like you're yes. in France or something and just drive around. It'd be actually much quicker and much safer. Or take the trolleys. Or take the trolleys. You can take the trolleys. I don't know. Those trolleys, are, well, those trolleys, quote unquote, are just buses and they just drive them around. They're huge. Yeah, but it's better to have somebody else drive yeah, exactly. than you drive yourself. And it's like, how, how do they drive those the streets? Well, the reason why they're so small and narrow, if you listened to the previous episode, is because a good part of Eureka Springs was just built in two years. Like, they were just slapping everything together as fast as they could. And uh, so, we finally get to the hotel. And basically, we just wandered around until we got settled in our room. Um, So, we stayed in, as you know, we stayed in Theodora's room. And she was rumored to pick up after guests. So what I did immediately was, we, of course, we're all looking around, like looking in the closets and stuff. <laughs> we're like, hello, is there a ghost in here? And uh, there's actually one creepy door that was like screwed shut. And it was like one of those small, like attic access doors. And I was like, I swear, in the middle of the night, that door comes open. I'm I'm out. And it was I'm all out. I could do not to take off my pants. <laughs> like it was so hard. I had to keep <laughs> pants on the entire time. You didn't have to. I did. I felt <laughs> obligated because then we had who like Chancy and Yeah. Uh, we had guests. Yeah, we had guests. Yeah. And then the ghost tour. Yeah. And once but, my pants are off, I don't want to put them back on. But exploring the room, uh, as we said in the previous episode, we found the unused tampon and a couple yeah. of uh a couple of hair No, that it, it was unused. It thank was God. unused, despite but, what Gary and <clears throat> my cousin said. But it really, ag- was it really aggravated me for the simple fact that supposedly this Theodora <laughs> cleans say, up well, after people. It should people. aggravate you one because 
the, there's a messy hotel room. Well, no, yeah, that's re- made prepare for guests. And then two, Theodora's supposed to be cleaning up after stuff. And the, the, it wasn't like like in a crack or crevice somewhere in a corner. It was literally right under the end of the bed. Yeah, like, it was on the floor, right there. <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the bed. Like, I bet if we would have stood at the other wall, the opposite wall, we could have looked down and probably seen it. Yeah, we could have. But, but we didn't find it until we were rearranging the room to record the podcast. Yeah, but what I did was I spread, like, stuff all throughout the room. Like, they gave us a little flyer, so I put that on the floor. I just threw a little little bit of everything all over just in case it was moved when we left the room or if it was moved in the middle of the night. And then we went and had some amazing pizza. That pizza took was us really forever good. to get sat down. But then we were thinking, okay, we'll go have some dinner. And then when we go back, all of our stuff will be tidied up. It'll and be then tidied up. It'll be all be moved. It'll be like, exciting. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Ghosts. But that's, that's not what happened. We did have some really good pizza, which is surprising. I was not expecting that at all. Probably the best pizza I've had in my life. Right. Um, Agreed. So we had our amazing food experience or mm-hmm. food gasm if you will yes and when we went back to the room and of course all of our stuff was there so we we're just like well let's just wander around until the ghost tour i guess so i told darren i said let's just pack our stuff and go this is bs <laughs> 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 oh no we just paid yeah. a ridiculous amount yeah, to stay the night here but we're leaving immediately but we wandered around and what the hotel does have is ambiance yeah. i mean it's really old it's you can tell it's really old. You can tell, like, at one point it was very grand. And it still is a sort of way. You can just tell that everything's just, like, pretty much ancient. And be, being on the fourth floor, there's a lot of steps to there's take. Unless you steps, take the elevator. But, but a lot of – and all the floors are crooked, too. Yeah. So especially if you're going up the stairs, especially if you're uh, with a big guy like Gary. If you're like, a big guy like me, yeah, like the Gary stairs, the like, flex. Yeah, the stairs are Ooh. just, like – they're just on the wall. And that's literally the whole support. Like, you're kind of – attached to the wall. You're kind of hoping that one of them gives and you fall through, (laughs) but not like at the fourth or the third, maybe towards the second floor, you know, more towards the bottom, you know, because then, you know, you do go through it, get less injured. But I mean, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, man, how awesome would it be? (laughs) Because then it'd be totally worth it. Yeah, but if you if you uh, had not made it, you would have become another ghost of the crescent. Oh yeah, it'd be like and they'd be the going haunted on the ghost. ghost of the stairs. <laughs> yeah, let's say they're going on the ghost tour. Like this is where someone allegedly fell and died. If you hear steps, it's just Gary. It's and just you, Gary. You might hear heavy breathing. Oh man, was this like a hundred years ago? No, this no. was <laughs> last year. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> and if you listen closely, <laughs> you can hear him <laughs> gasping for air towards oh, the fourth floor. Oh, so yeah. many stairs. <laughs> Ooh, should have taken the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing this again. There's one elevator, and it's pretty small. So it's like you can only get a few people in there. And the elevator is as old as the, the hotel. It is. But we did actually accidentally meet the owner of the hotel on the yes. elevator, Mrs. Uh, Renick. Renick. I yeah. can't remember her first name. It starts with an E. But we met Miss Rennick on there. Some uh, we were getting on. There was a maid on there with us, and then some old lady got on with us. Some old lady. You can tell she sees people all the time because she was not uh, like I didn't know immediately that it was her. But I, what yeah, comment? She was she was dressed in uh, jeans and a t-shirt. And what comment did I make to her? And oh uh, no no no, she used a key on yeah, the elevator. She used the key on the elevator, and then Gary, who will make friends with anybody and everyone, is like. Does that go to the secret floor? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, actually, yes. Uh, yes. And so I was like, hmm. I live up there. So I was like, hmm. Yeah. And then she was talking to the maid about something. She mentioned living there. And I was like, and we got off the elevator. I was like, I think that was the owner. He was mm-hmm. like, you think so? And I was like, yeah. And then Gary was like, she doesn't look like she comes from money. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, do you look like Maybe that? Maybe we should tell her that she needs to get our damn room painted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, and then of course, I don't know why Gary's being a grumpy gills. The whole weekend. And then Gary yeah. was like, uh, what was it? It was like, well, she didn't ask us how we liked the hotel or anything. Right. Was like, why would she? Is she she's, because it's her hotel. It's her baby. It's her hotel. But then Gary was like, I would have told her that her rooms are too pricey. I'm like, yeah. that's exactly why. <laughs> why she doesn't that's want to exactly talk to people. That's exactly why she doesn't want to talk to people. <laughs> rooms too pricey. You need to paint our room. Well, they, they got this wrong with our food. Okay, seriously, though. Uh, okay, the haunt, the ghost stuff. 
fantastic. Okay, I, I get it. The ambiance, the oldness yep. Yep. of the hotel, the age, all that crap. But seriously, like our room, <laughs> like there were cracks in the walls. Yes. Like I like I almost feel like they use the the ghost tour as, as an, an excuse. excuse. Yes, yeah. as an excuse to not do anything See, I with the room. I didn't mind it though. If I walked into a haunted hotel that was 133 years old and everything looked brand new and pristine, it wouldn't be the same. But see, you're also you're also a, a, a man who's in a happy relationship with no children, <laughs> no children, all your money. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, Darren had to spot me the money for this room. Okay. Sure. I'm a single dad with three kids. And it was like. The way I look at it, like the total cost was three hundred and something dollars, three hundred and fifty dollars, because they they price you per person yes. to stay in the room, and so Not per room, the total per cost was like over three hundred and something dollars. Part of that was our VIP ghost tour ticket too. So oh, was it okay? Yeah. Well, either way, so I can go to Holiday Inn. <laughs> me and him, me, him, his girlfriend, and a couple friends for a hundred and fifty dollars a night, it, it, maybe less. Yeah, and and have a modernized. Well, I mean, I guess you're staying at the Crescent Hotel for the the, the experience. Yeah, the experience because it's it's historic in itself. It has a long and storied history, all of which. But I don't think taking cracks out of the walls <laughs> and painting is going to take away from. Even replacing the carpet, getting rid of the musty s smell of the room. Yeah, you know, they kind of have that. But I mean, to to its credit, uh, everything was structurally sound. The room itself wasn't like there yeah. wasn't a draft. There, it wasn't too humid. Everything was sealed. It was air conditioner worked. The really air well. conditioner worked really well. It was nice and cool. I was comfortable in the room. Now the bathroom was really cool. It gave me like it was white, like it was weird because it had the like the bay windows. Yeah. And so you could see if you've watched haunted movie, you know, <laughs> horror movies and the, like horror movies, like it felt like one of them, It did, you know, like it, very it, much it, did. it felt haunted more than the room. Yeah. More than the room itself, which I mean, the bathroom is not even the haunted part of the room because right. the room was actually, uh, it was two rooms with run with one side being Theodora's and then the other side being a totally separate room. But they combined it into a suite to make one room, and so the bathrooms on the side that wasn't haunted, quote unquote, by Theodora. So, but but the bathroom did feel more haunted than the room itself. It, it was just the the bathroom, and it wasn't. It was bright. It was bright, and it and it white walls was warm. White tile yeah, floor. and it looked nice. It wasn't. I mean, the bathtub had a little bit of rust on it, but for the most part, it looked like it had been well taken care of. But. Uh, the bathroom as well as all with the hotel. The floors were like so uneven. <laughs> right. <laughs> like like you could even see on the crack of the door like it was slanted. Oh, yeah. I mean, granted, it's a super old hotel. and uh, I mean, obviously. Now, also, as a big guy, like walking around, like even though everything was crooked and stuff like that, it I didn't feel unsafe. The only time I really felt unsafe is walking down the main steps <laughs> in the hotel. Yeah. Like, they really fe it felt like the wood was on its last leg. Like it's maybe got another couple years in it, and, and then somebody will become the new star of the ghost tour. <laughs> yeah. So so walking around a hotel, I never really got like even on the ghost tour, I never really got the heebie-jeebies or uh, any sort of mm -mm. ghostly vibe. But then again, we may not be sensitive to that kind of stuff if you believe in that. Right. Um, so that's always a possibility. I know definitely there were some people on our ghost tour that definitely did feel that. Oh, yeah. Because it was easy to see in their face well, like, just a reaction uh, to everything. The ghost guess, tour itself. Well, uh, Ke uh, Keegan, right? Is it Keegan? Yeah. Keegan and I said her name earlier. What was it? <laughs> Chancy. Chancy, yes. Keegan and Chancy. Keegan is scared to death of that crap. Oh, yeah. But he loved it. He was there for yeah. Super Thrill. But he was really But he didn't excited. stay the night. He no. just did the ghost tour. Yeah. And I'm sure... We weren't on the same ghost tour with him, but I'm sure he was loving it. We had some people on our ghost tour that were absolutely loving it. And, yeah. Let's uh, get to our ghost tour. All yeah, right. So let's, so let's talk about the ghost tour yeah. itself. So uh, they... Where did our ghost tour start? What do you mean where? Where in the hotel? It, it starts in the, the hallway by our room, by the pizza place. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. So... 
it's on the fourth floor, uh, right across from the pizza place. And we, we sit down. She tells us a little bit about the actual history of the hotel and Eureka Springs itself. Mostly just the history of Eureka Springs. Uh, she played the calliophone for us. I did really enjoy this lady. I, Aside from a few things. I, yeah. I enjoyed her a heck of a lot more than I enjoyed, I enjoyed the original guy. the other guy more because he seemed to like his job more. And he was more eccentric. <laughs> he was really excited about it. Whereas this lady was just like... Hmm, what does my script say again? It, I mean, she was really good too because she had like the she was from Louisiana and she had a really thick, yeah, accent. So it kind of like added to it. This guy was, but the guy, the the guy from the original that we did, he was very he was over, over. He overdid it. Like, that's he was, what I'm. That's uh, what I'm there for, Gary. I'm not there for someone to be like. Yeah. Here are the facts. I'm for, there for someone who says. Legend. Has yeah, but then again, you 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 do get what is it? You you do get off on the what do you tell me to do during the podcast all the time? Inflection. 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 That's yeah, true. This guy because, definitely had. Well, Gary, you're just like a <laughs> lot of inflection. Yes. He was. Very, you can tell he loved his job. But anyway, back to the ghost store. So we immediately go out and we immediately go to Theodore's room. Uh, side note: When we were in Theodore's room, like getting all of our stuff and stuff ready getting our stuff unpacked and everything. There were ghost tours coming by and they, they were, they go to the door on Theodora's side of the room. Yeah. That door is unused. There's no number. There's no knob on it, but it's the other side of our room, but the door is still to our room. Like you'd so, be there. So, so, so yeah. So, so I was standing by the door when the ghost tour was going on and Gary's like, Darren, I was like, what? You're like, you're like bang on the door. Yeah, bang on the door. <laughs> I was like, oh, give man, these people something. I really want, they to. want it. Cause like we, cause <laughs> We were sitting there and uh, in the room when we were getting all our stuff unpacked, and that I could see that being annoying to some people who aren't there for the haunted experience. But to be fair, if you're booking Theodora's room, you're booking it for the ghost. No one accidentally books Theodora's room. Well, some people room. might just book it to stay at a hotel. I mean, it might no, just... No, because this is uh, one of the more expensive rooms. You have to specifically request this room. Oh, you don't I get what, I get what you're saying. So, so you should expect so the ghost tour yes, to come. You by. should expect the ghost tour. It shouldn't be like, wait, why are they doing yeah. this outside? <laughs> why are people room? outside of our doors all the time? <laughs> but so I didn't bang on the door, no matter how much I wanted to. But anyway, on the ghost tour, so we go to the room, and they were like, and the ghost was like, we should bring them in and show them inside. And I was like, I really want to, but I couldn't really find a way to be like, hey. Guys, let's yeah. all go in. Well, we, we did want to like I, 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 the actual entrance to the room is kind of like around the corner. It'd be kind of yeah. weird to funnel everyone through. And in the in the, in the group, you can't help but want to like when the lady's talking, you want to nod on. You want to you kind of elbow them, and say, "It's my room. I'm, st I'm, st I'm staying in that room." Yeah, me and Gary were looking at each other and giggling. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are so cool. Yeah, but so we went on the ghost tour, and she did do a really good job. I know she was saying she was like trying to remember from her script, and for the most part, she was. But she did uh, she the talked, way she talked about all the main points, uh, all the ghosts that we talked about on the podcast. You know how you have I, mean, I wouldn't say pet peeves, but there's just certain things that people do that just make you want to pull your hair out or yes, scream at them or all say, the "Why are you doing that?" The word children <laughs> is used so many times in the script. Like I said, she has a very thick Louisiana yes. accent. And she says, what, it, children? Children. Children. And she said children. Like, like if the first couple times me and Gary were like, did she just say yeah, children? Yeah, she said, and then, but then she has and to use she, the word children a hundred times. Used, yeah, she used it a hundred times. And so me and Gary were just trying not to let Oh, it. my and gosh. And all, we go to each other and be like, Gary, what? Children. Children. <laughs> She was she was great though, and uh, she was awesome. We didn't. Uh, uh, they actually dress up like in old timey costumes when they take you on the tour, which is great. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they don't burn up. I mean, the whole hotel staff, for the most part, wears the. Yeah, well, well, the the regular hotel staff. Oh, they're they wear, like black it's, long sleeves. It's more like old. It's not like as old timey, but it, it's definitely. I was I, I was getting mixed up because I did, I had a a buddy. Uh, we went to Silver Dollar City the weekend after. Yeah. And Silver Dollar City, they all wear like yes. 30s or yes, it 20. And it because looks so miserable. The whole point of the park. It looks so hot. But to yeah. be fair, if you volunteer, if you're like, hey, I'm going to go work at Silver Dollar City, and then you, man, I can't believe what to wear this suit. <laughs> That's on you. That's on you. Um, but anyways, yeah, we went out back. Mm -hmm. uh, or, no, sorry. The, we're going on the ghost tour. Yep. Okay, so we were wondering, like, uh, at least I was. We were doing About the, children? The, the tour after the children. <laughs> 
and all that. We get we get to the the morgue. Yes. At the bottom, it's at the the morgue is the the last stop of the the ghost tour of the regular and, ghost. Yes. Tour. And then I was like, okay, I'm wondering what. Because Darren had told me we were doing the VIP, and I'm like, where the hell's the VIP <laughs> That's part? That's like, we're at the like, end um, of the ghost tour. Like, where we we're... paid extra money for VIP. Yeah. It's like, this is the same thing and... we've already done. Yeah. Now, I will note that so at the, the last leg of it, you're in the morgue, and there was this other older lady sitting there just staring at everybody, just looking. I'm like, <laughs> staring deep I'm like, who souls. the. I was like, who the hell is this woman? I know. I was like, is she a ghost? Yeah, I'm like, what is, like, what's going to happen? Like, what is she doing? Because she wasn't saying nothing. Right. She Nobody was, was acknowledging her. I thought maybe she was part of the group, but, I'm, but she was dressed funny. Yeah, and, she was dressed like the other ghost tour staff. Yeah, and I'm like, what? I don't understand. And then finally, our ghost tour ended, and then she says, we're going to pass you off to this woman, which, the VIP ha- which was the woman, yeah. And before we get to that, a uh, cool thing they do on the ghost tour in the morgue is uh, they have... They have the freezer down there, which uh, Norman Baker stored the bodies in. And what they'll do is they'll pack you all into the freezer and shut the door and shut the lights out for a few for a few seconds with everybody in there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Well, yeah, I mean that is pretty cool, but I think it'd been even cooler like twenty years ago before cell phones. That's cooler freezer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that pissed me off. There's like, no. Li- I mean, as soon as the light went out, everyone turned on their cell phone flashlights. I was like, "What are you doing? It's what's the point? Why did you come in here? Right. If you're just gonna turn on the light." I was. <laughs> I was mad. I was super mad. Because the first time we went in there, people didn't do that. It stayed dark for periods in the first. Yeah. The first time. This time it like didn't get dark at all because no, everybody like, kept immediately. Me. But then uh, we went to the VIP part, which is uh, she took us down this path toward the back, and that's where. Um, that's that was our real end of the tour, and that's where we saw the alleged uh, bottles of specimens and medicines that Norman Baker buried on the premises that and it was, was such recently a discovered this year. Crock of shite! <laughs> oh my god! So, yeah, I think this is a good transition to talk about <laughs> Gary's skepticism <laughs> she, over the whole ghost. He gets thing. mad at me because I was su- I'm such a I'm negative Nancy. At, but you weren't mad at me. I was though. I was mad at you for being negative all weekend. I wasn't mad right. at you for being skeptical. All right. Yeah. I just. <laughs> Like every time something remotely, like <laughs> even the slightest inconvenience happened, Gary was like, "Man, this is this is BS." I, hey, I enjoyed myself. Yes, I had a great yeah, time he, with you. I, I could tell he was enjoying himself, but just I every did. once in a while, he'd be like, "Man, just some things <laughs> pissed me off," and I. I was like, man, if I ran this, I would do things so different. <laughs> there would be no ghost tour. Yeah, there would be no ghost tour. <laughs> and we would make no Get money. rid of all this. And then I would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So let's talk about the validity of the ghost claims themselves. A lot of the ghosts actually don't even come from the Norman Baker era. A lot of them, like Michael, he was a mason that was building the hotel the lady in white on the ledge comes from when the, the hotel college. was a college. Uh, there was Theodora, who was around the Norman Baker time, or at least they think. So, as we mentioned before, that she was just a housekeeper, right? They don't know. Theodora. They don't oh, know. They don't know. Okay. They don't know for sure because all the records were destroyed by Norman Baker when he was trying to run from the FBI. One of the things that uh, I really wanted to talk about was the fact that they make a lot of money out of selling this ghost stuff. Oh, yeah. And that's one of, I mean, you can say that about any haunted uh, business. Is you like, oh, yeah. I'm willing to bet that's that's probably 75% of their their profit. That's that's probably, yeah, I would say it's most. I would right. say it's most that most people go to the Crescent for the ghosts. Just for that, yeah. Yeah, but also it's a beautiful building. I, I, just, I think I mentioned this, like, not just in the last episode, but in the episode we, the episode four, Creepy Legend of Arkansas, part two. Uh, that I think there's no problem if if you if I had a haunted business like a legitimately haunted business why wouldn't I promote that right it's it's profitable either way and if you're a good businessman you're gonna do that because you're there no to make you're, you are there like, to make money whether I have this haunted building why not you know take advantage of that but on the other end you can say that oh they they made this whole thing up to make more money well as you, you know and revert back to episode what was the the Bell family and the the oh the, yeah the witch yeah. the Bell witch the Bell witch yeah uh, you know he had that the haunting so he started having of course he didn't make money on it but he, he could have no he didn't make any for money the time money. right but he, he lost money but he used it. tour I mean he had a tour well based, he, you know. he basically had a tour he was like yeah come check it out I mean, so I mean but that, that could have been so, like I'm not crazy come see for right. yourself so if you can make money on it I mean I can I can yeah. see that 
Uh, let's rewind a little bit, but let's uh, do it. before we did the ghost tour, we were wandering around out back, and we didn't realize that it, it, there's more steps. You go to the little garden area. There's a pool. Uh, you know where the cat's buried, not at the pool, but in the in the little garden area. But then you get on the steps, and we found um, a little stand that has axe throwing. Yeah, which was super random. Like was... I saw it, like when I got the when I booked the hotel, like it was like attractions, and that was like the first thing on there. I was like, oh yeah, somewhere in Eureka Springs, there's an axe throwing place. And I was like, that would be pretty cool. Me and Gary should do that. But I didn't know it was literally on the hotel grounds. Yes, it's right there behind. Uh, you know, uh, we only, I mean, they, we got there 45 minutes before it closed. Yeah. So, and, and I think it closed at nine and I think our ghost tour was at nine thirty, right? Yeah. 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 So we did some, uh, ax throwing for the first time in our lives. It's kind of cool. It was kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I still, my shoulders still hurt. I don't know what I did to it. But my shoulder is still messed up. Oh, are you still sore it from it? Oh. No, that's if I throw it one hand. If I, if I threw it with both hands, right. that, I felt fine. But this, throw it like a sissy. <laughs> no, that's how you're supposed to throw axes. Oh, are you? <laughs> Jason Momoa, a very large man who is really good at axe throwing, he throws it with two hands. Oh, really? Yeah. That so, was, I mean, that was the way Night to get Wolf it to do it. In Mortal Kombat, <laughs> throws it with two hands. But the dude next to us. Oh, my God. Dude, he, uh, was, he had a really <laughs> hot date, though. Like, his date was, like, super hot. Like, no. Yeah, but it wasn't when he was throwing axes. He wasn't trying to impress her. He was ignoring her. He was like so focused. On yeah, that. he was. He was he throwing was the axes so, so hard. Like he was going for brute strength yeah, of throwing. He was going one to arm. get the handle into that wood instead of the blade. I'm pretty sure he was trying to. I'm pretty sure he was like, "Hey, check this out to the to the lady that was with him." I think he was. I think it started like that, but literally, it got to the point where he was not even. He wanted looking to stick it in the wall. He so he wasn't bad. looking at her at all. Like, wasn't it talking to her or anything? <laughs> he was just focused on his axe throwing to the point. I'm like, dude, you need to calm down. Because you literally do go insane if you can't get the freaking axe <laughs> to stick into the wall. You start getting, and then you see somebody else stick it in the wall, right, and it just makes you times. want it even more. So, Darren, I think Darren got it twice. I think you got it twice, didn't you? you got I the, think so. Yeah, I think you got I it twice. Got I got it, it once. once, so I was happy. Like if you, right. As long as you get it once, you're satisfied. But, but anyways, back to the ghost tour. <laughs> yeah, the, you know the thing that people are actually tuning in to listen right. to. Now, if you, the, 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 the VIP part, now, now you guys could, if you're listening and you want to do this, I mean, I don't think, I don't think it's really such a thing as a spoiler because I think you, you can read yeah, about really. it online. They advertise all yeah, of Yeah, they this. advertise all of it. But anyways... The VIP part, so they take you down the end of the drive, and there is a building, which is obvious. They built around, like if you read in the news, they found these, these bo- they found bottles of Norman Baker's medicine, medicine specimens, specimen, yeah, yada yada, all that crap. So they've built this little cute little building over the hole, and of course, there's a bunch of bottles showing in this hole. Yep. Still have babies. Darren thinks it's plausible. I think they it's just, plausible because, yeah. well, Gary's like, oh, they just made all this up to make they more just, money. Yeah. And to be fair, when she was showing us quote unquote specimens, there was that one jar, there was a jar that allegedly had a heart in it. Oh, there's a few but, jars, three or four jars. Yes, there's three or four jars, but the one that allegedly had a heart in it oh, yeah. uh, had no lid. It had plastic wrap over the top. It was the they all did, band. didn't they? What? No, just that oh, one. Oh, just that one? Just I the thought the one they the all heart. did. Okay. No, no. It was just the one. Okay. I think after Gary saw that one, like he's like, man, this is real. <laughs> this is a crock of crap, is what <laughs> This is. Because like it's a it's a tumor. Was it a t- it was a tumor? It's not the tumor. <laughs> it was not the tumor. No, there's a few different jars she showed us. One was a tumor, or two were tumors. It was an eyeball. Yeah, which one? A tumor, uh, an eyeball, and a heart. Right. Okay. I the think, heart yeah. was the one with the plastic okay. wrap over it. But, and Gary was like, if it was a real heart, it wouldn't just have plastic wrap. Would, over yeah, it. there would be nothing. She would have. She was carrying around it in a bag, in a little toolbox, <laughs> and then she, like, it, it, there's just a piece of cling wrap right with a hair tie or a rubber band she didn't wear gloves and you I know dang well honestly i wouldn't think you would have to wear gloves if it's sealed in a jar no the dude i drive behind sealed. i drive behind a gut truck from tyson or cargill or something like that yeah. and it smells to high heaven right these have been buried for years yes, but they have been uh suspended in formaldehyde a preservative but surely it years. still stinks yeah probably you go into a no, Gary, real morgue with dead bodies. I'm sure it before smells. they showed it. To oh, us. they got it. No, so I think that part was definitely exaggerated. I don't. Th- I think. Uh, I think the two specimens that were actually sealed might have been real, but because because the two specimens that we saw, they weren't like really impressive looking, which makes me think that they were 
valid. Because I wasn't like, oh my god, that looks exactly like an eyeball. You can tell it was like an eyeball that's been suspended in something for so many years. If it was an eyeball. But it wasn't like perfectly like an eye in a jar. It was like all desiccated and stuff. But uh, the Next heart- time we go, there's going to be a, a hole in the roof <laughs> of that little building over that hole. Yeah. There's going to be a hole and they're going to say, uh, just last month, a skydiver's <laughs> parachute didn't open. And he came right through and the roof. You're going to see a little, uh, yeah. like, like a goofy hole. The bottles are all going to be broken. <laughs> the bottles are all going to be broken down in there. And, uh, uh I don't but know. I've granted, I think a lot of this stuff is exaggerated. I'm even some of the stories I'm not even sure are true, but I would say, I think the Crescent Hotel has a pretty good case for being haunted. Not just because of the history behind it. Well, obviously just, because of the history behind it. See, but. I'm not even convinced like anything beyond the building of it. Yeah. The original story. <laughs> I'm not convinced that the rest of it is is legit. Well, Gary, it's just as true as anything other historic anything else historic. You're right. You're right. I mean you can choose not to believe it or not. You're right. I don't know exactly why I'm so salty, but there's something I mean, I enjoyed it. I the, the did, hanging out did. with you, I really enjoyed it and it just to know what we were doing was exciting and fun. It's just there are too many things in there that irritate the crap That's out of true. me. That's true. Like I said, they definitely exaggerate it, but some of it, I think there's a kernel of truth in there for sure. And they don't tell you that there's a free breakfast buffet. <laughs> that was They don't advertise that. Gary's so salty. Because we went and had pizza again, which I'm I, the pizza, like I said, is amazing. Right. So I don't have any complaints, but we could have had a free breakfast. And so when you when you granted are we in didn't wake up in time, but that's because we didn't know there was a we breakfast. didn't know there was a but to me like when you're spending so much money, any extra bonus it, right is I mean you were salty about spending five bucks to throw axes. Yeah, well because there was only forty five minutes left because it's actually five dollars for as long as you want. Yeah. And we were literally limited for 45 minutes. And then as soon as we started. Five bucks for 45 minutes is actually really good. Well, but yeah, but then when we started, the, there was, first of all, there was a dude in the hot chick. I mean, there's only so many times then, you could throw an axe and be like, yeah. And then a family enjoyable. walked up behind us. So we had to share our time with the people. Yeah. You know. That's fine. We made friends with them. And they were actually on the ghost tour. which In is, Michael's room. Which Yeah, I was about to say, which is coincidence enough. But then not only that, they also had... Michael's room. So there was, uh, we were on the same tour and we both had one of the most haunted rooms in the hotel. Was it a coincidence or was it ghosts? <laughs> Fate had decided that we should be, we should meet and make friends first. Yes. And then meet on the ghost tour and then find out that we both had. And the then the ghost tour the later hotel. did let her open the door to her room. Well, would, I don't would think not allow us. She to. did it so fast. I don't think the ghost lady had anything oh, to say about it. Oh, yeah, right. The ghost tour lady. We should specify. There was an actual ghost lady. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, she when we got to her room with the tour, she just opened it wide and everybody was like, "Oh, man, that's awesome." Yeah. But then the tour lady was like, "Don't go in the room." Yeah. She can't. didn't sound like that. And you I, can't go in there, children. <laughs> children you can't go in there because of liability purposes yeah. which makes sense which makes sense and yeah. they're like you know go after after the tour and i was like yeah let's all go to our room after this for the ghost tour after party and let's party over there <laughs> Nora. but no it, it was uh, it was a good experience for sure we found some reviews on it yeah on TripAdvisor. some good and bad ones so we I thought we'd read a couple. Yeah, we, we picked a couple of our good ones Some on our ones side did. of the table. So Some Darren's gonna read funny. the Darren's gonna read the four and five star, like the four or five star yeah. one, and I'm gonna read a couple one star ones. Yes. I don't know if I would give it a one star if I reviewed it. You wouldn't give it a one star. There's no way you. Would. I probably should review for the it. pizza alone. I probably should review it just because since we ask for reviews on our podcast. Yeah, let's review I, it, the hotel. I think I we should at least review the hotel. Yeah, I can. So I think we'll do that. Okay. Uh, the first five-star review is titled, So Much to See. Uh, it says, We went here to see the ghost tour, but we are so glad that we stayed at this hotel. It's quaint and unique, and everywhere you look is a piece of history. They've even left the sloped floors and odd door sizes from the early 20th century add-ons. <laughs> it was a hospital at one time, and you can wander for hours, finding all the unique spots and historical facts around there. Do not miss the ghost tours. So... One thing I want to say is he said you can wander around for hours, and we literally did that. So that 100% true. I'm not I'm not so sure 
about the uh, they purposely left the slope floor right. to keep the historical <laughs> feel. I think they're just like, no, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to mess with that. Yeah. You know what? I realized that we forgot to do though. What's that? I remember, apparently, when it was a college, I think they had a bowling alley. Yeah. We forgot they they said that some of the floor is still down from where the there was the bowling alley. Yeah, and my my grandpa actually worked on the bowling alley. Yeah, and I f- we totally forgot to go see the bowling That's alley. True. We did the floor, That's okay. the floor of the bowling alley. Yeah, where it used to be. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and read your first. All right. This bag. is this is a one star review. Oh man. And it is titled "Overpriced Historical <laughs> Haunted Quote Unquote Dump." Gary, did you leave this review? I did not. <laughs> I'm not this mean. I mean. Okay, so they said, My family stayed at this place on Wednesday night. My fiancé wanted to stay here due to having read about this hotel and having seen it on one of those ghost shows. At the price, I assumed that the place had all the classic and historical parts, but, like most older hotels like this, had renovated the rooms to be somewhat modern or a mix of classic and modern. What? I was completely shocked and disgusted (laughs) to go into a room that had peeling paint, a tub that was missing all form of caulk, and had rust on it. No desk, no table for me to do any work that I needed to do. A small refrigerator that was down on the floor... So we had to almost get on our knees to use it. They stayed in Theodore's room. I was say, that sounds a lot yeah. <laughs> There was an odd smell as well. I absolutely detested my time here. I, I think I, I think I should read it and how I picture this guy sounding. <laughs> I was about to say, I have a certain voice in mind. Let's see if it's the same voice. Mm, I absolutely yes. detested my time here. Mm. I think she was disappointed too, but didn't want to admit it. The pool was barely lit night, as the light by the pool was out. Mm. Mm. The only bright point was, no pun intended, because uh. the light was out, <laughs> was they gave us a $30 off coupon to the restaurant. Oh, yes, that's pretty good. The website said breakfast was open until 11 a.m., so we go down <laughs> to eat at 10, and they are closed. Complete and utter Bull, asterisk, 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 <laughs> T. I wouldn't pay $50 to stay here again, much less $165 or whatever she paid for this overblown hype of a hotel. $165, they did it all right then. Yeah, that's not- <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it looks very nice and impressive from the outside, especially yeah. at a distance up on the hill, but sheesh. I should have taken photos, but frankly, I was over it. I just wanted the next morning to come so I could get somewhere else. And that was June of 2019. Okay, so that was just like a month, or two months ago. Yeah. But okay, so he does have some valid points, but this guy is also really super dramatic. Like you can definitely the the problems that we have in the he first lives world, in a half a million dollar home. Yeah, I, I can guarantee. The problems it. we live have in the first world is like. I mean, if you paid fifty dollars to stay anywhere else, you would be like stabbed in your sleep by and the I, drug dealer. Next and I'm door. assuming he was one of them, like his wife knew about it, but I have a feeling he knew absolutely nothing, he knew nothing about, about it. About the hotel, and it sounds like because if not you go on the if you store. honestly knew nothing about it at all, the history or anything, right. I, you would find like, it completely disgusting. It sounded, yeah, it sounded like he knew it was an old hotel, but he just knew it was an old hotel. He didn't know anything about it, the history or anything. So uh, if you know nothing walking into it, you're going to think that your room is disgusting. I would Absolutely. much rather spend the night in an old hotel with peeling paint in a rusty tub than I would in the in a really nice, up-to-date hotel in a sketchy neighborhood. <laughs> that's you know? true, yeah. Because this is not a sketchy neighborhood. It's up on a hill all by itself, and it's got a great view overlooking. Speaking of which, our room had an amazing view it out, did. out the yeah. back. Yeah, it had all these rolling hills. Great view. Um so he does have some valid points, but overall, I think he's being super dramatic. You can definitely tell this guy's a drama queen in real life. <laughs> no, he lives in a half a million dollar oh, home. Oh, yeah, I guarantee for sure. it. For least... sure. But, uh, all right, so picking up from that, let's go to our uh, next good review. Uh, this one I, I thought was funny because he mentions, he mentions a person more than he does the hotel. So uh, it's titled A Must See. My husband, oh, she, 
Or it could be heat. I don't know. Uh, is Eureka. It is Eureka. Know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my husband and I stopped to get information on the ghost tour and to buy a souvenir. Linda was at the information desk and was very knowledgeable about the hotel and area. Uh, we bought our souvenirs and were asking about the cat that lives there. Linda went out of her way to help us and try to find the cat. Oh, little get the guy out. I can't imagine having to go find him. He's always yeah. He's always. I, always, there. I had no yeah. problem finding him. Right. Um, we didn't get to see him on this trip. How did you not? Hmm. Uh, but we will definitely be back and stay longer. If you ever go look for Linda, she will definitely make your visit. First class. Hmm. Man, I wish we knew about this before that. I'd be like, I know. excuse me, is Linda working right yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. I heard she's pretty great. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, that's the only reason I picked that one. Now, now this review, this one star review, I, I relate to her, to or to him, or whoever it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain after every. Okay, so the title is "Disappointed," dusty and musty. AC had two settings, off and sixty degrees, which is, I think ours did a little bit. I think. I think what it was. There's a plastic flap. If you open it, there's more settings. I don't yeah. think you open oh. the plastic flap. <laughs> Disturbed late at night by ghost hunters putting their cell phone cameras under our door twice. So I'm assuming it was a ghost tour. Dude, if yeah, I was about to say if you're if you're if they're putting cameras under your door, then you booked a haunted room. Yeah. That's on that once again, that's on you. <laughs> right. Uh they put their cell phone cameras under our door twice. Staff very disinterested in any of my concern, even to the point of saying <laughs> their video coverage not showing anyone putting anything near my door. I'm not sure they even had video. Took senior staff three days to respond to my, to respond to my complaint. Go tour the hotel for history, but don't spend the night. Okay, so at least he did appreciate the history of the hotel. Right. Unlike the first guy. Right. And, and pretty much the only thing he was mad about was ghost hunters. Well, and well, if it was the ghost tour and people, like, that the ones we've valid, been on has been yeah. respectful. I mean, they... The, I mean, th- uh, there was a dude on our tour that put his ear up to the door, yeah. which it's fine. That's fine, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, putting your cell phone on. Yeah, that's a little much. That's definitely a valid concern. Um, I don't know if that's enough. To, what star review was that? Did it have one? One. It was a one star. Yeah, I'm not sure if that deserved a one star review yeah. because he didn't really complain about anything else. Besides... I mean, it's not the staff's fault. No, it's not. They don't. They can only do so much to control their guests. I think uh, a lot of it was the staff's concerns about it. It's like, well, what do you what do you want the staff to do about that? It's like, do you want them to track down the exact people who put that in black? No, what it is is it's the price they spent to stay yes, the night there, yeah. and they're just it's wanting like a part it's like of I've it back. Spend five dollars <laughs> to throw an just... axe for forty five minutes. <laughs> they just wanted some of their money back. <laughs> it's true, probably that probably was. Exactly what it was. So we'll go in and end on a good review then. Yeah, this one's kind of long. Uh, this one, I guess he just had a lot to say. The title itself is Magical, Memorable Experience Memorable Experience for the Whole Family. Um, it says, Such a unique, magical, and memorable experience for my two kids, ages 9 and 6. You can tell that the proprietors are focused on bringing the history and mystique of the hotel to life for all visitors, whether you are a ghost hunter or not. The ornate design of the hotel still shines through the undoubtedly meticulous upkeep. I don't know about that. Um, giving current visitors the feel of nostalgic luxuriousness, while the natural weathering of time sets the stage for the creepy lure surrounding the building's history. What a great place to take the family. I highly recommend the ghost tour the first night you stay there. It really set the tone for the rest of our trip. And their fireside stories are such a great idea. The kids loved everything about it. What, what was it? Their what? Their fireside stories. Oh. Okay, I got you. Fire side fireside stories. stories. Okay. It's not literally. Fire I thought you side. said fireside storage. I'm like, where was that at? <laughs> was that the little door we Come couldn't on open? Down to the fireside storage. I was like, is that the door we couldn't open? Yes, that's exactly what it was. Um, kids loved everything about it. And by the way, we stayed there for four nights, wow. and the entire time we only noticed one TV on in the windows. That's a weird detail. I guess if you're looking at it from the outside and mm-hmm. you see a TV on, it kind of breaks immersion. From the whole ghost thing? I don't know. That's weird detail. Uh, there's so much to be had. No one wanted to be in their rooms, and the staff was super friendly and helpful. But yeah, that this is an example of what I call uh, over-exaggeration, whereas the other one's exaggerated how bad it was. This one's definitely... This guy, is a no, this guy reviews a lot. He does, yeah. And uh, well thought out. reviews, I'm glad 
Uh, I mean, he's not wrong in a lot of this. Uh, it is pre- It is a great experience. It's definitely memorable. Uh, the ornate design of the hotel still shines through. And that's probably why they didn't update too much because they're trying to, because this was a, back in the day, this was a very, the most luxurious hotel. And you kind of get that feeling when you walk in, you're like, oh, this is what luxury was like back in the day. On it, honestly, I, like I said, I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I really did. I, I just think they need to drop the per person pricing. Yes. There's I definitely. I think it needs to be $150 a night, $200 max. Now, now let me ask you this, Gary. If we had a legitimate ghost experience, would you have uh, said the price was worth it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know. Because we're here talking about the ghost. So I what, really don't know. What if? Let me let me set an example for you. Let's say we're getting ready to go to bed, getting our jammies on, getting all comfy, <laughs> just sleeping in the yeah. same bed together because <laughs> <laughs> we have no choice. And uh, all of a sudden, just we see this woman in white at the corner of the room. Who, drew, who looked exactly like the Theodore picture on the wall, right. all dressed in old-timey clothes, who looks at us and then just disappears. Would you say that paying that much for the ho- staying in the hotel would be worth it? I, probably. I probably wouldn't even be thinking about the, the cost of exactly, it at that point. Exactly. So I would say, yeah. I mean, it, it is expensive. It is expensive, for sure. Very expensive. Right. <laughs> but uh, it was fun to get down there. It was definitely fun. Okay, how about record. pricing? Nobody cares about pricing, Gary. No. I'm talking about ghosts. I know, but I'm saying that pricing with experience. Like if you're depending upon experience. Yes. <laughs> I need a guaranteed ghost yeah. experience <laughs> in my room. $150 oh. a night, no experience. Yeah. $350 a night if you have experience. <laughs> but then people won't tell them they're about right. their experience. Yeah. <laughs> nope, didn't see anything. Yeah. I, anyway, I got to check out really, yeah. really. <laughs> Another thing that I wanted to do, but it didn't end up doing, was I was going to film us with the video camera I brought while we slept. I didn't do that. So, Oh, crap. I forgot. Yeah, me too. We I, didn't even use your case at all. Yeah, I was re-listening to the episode. And I was like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> I promise something didn't deliver. Sorry this was kind of like very unstructured and more of like just our basic review of the oh. hotel itself than anything about ghosts. But I think it's nice to have something not scripted for once. But uh, actually, <laughs> while we're... <laughs> Talking about ghost stuff, the whole reason I wanted to do this. Let's talk about the recording oh, yeah. that I got on on the recording. Uh, I picked this. This could be literally anything. This could be like shifting in a chair or anything like that. But to me, what it sounds like, it sounds like a voice that isn't similar to anyone in the room. Didn't sound like me. Didn't sound like you. Didn't sound like Keegan. I think it didn't just sounded like, like a wisp. Yeah, it sounded like I don't know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna like. I'm going to play it in this episode like 10 times in a row so listeners can have a good listen to it All right. if they want to. But uh, let's have you take a listen to it so we can see what you think. Okay. I'm telling you, man, it's a whole bunch of BS. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we should leave it on for a little bit, or do you think? So Gary says he didn't hear much about it, but I, I can definitely hear it. It almost sounds like uh, it could have been something very much from the radio scanner that we were using. But it, it, but out of all the radio scanner noise, that's the first time I heard anything that actually sounded like not from a radio station. And to me, it does sound like a voice. I have no idea what it's saying. I mean, after listening to it again, like when I listened to it on the original episode, yeah. I didn't. I just sounded like a wisp. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to hear. The, the, actually hearing it in headphones... I could see how it would sound like somebody. Like, uh, yeah, the reason I pulled this is just because it didn't sound like anything else right. in the recording, and we were already doing EVP, so I was like, I might as well just put this in. And to me, it does sound kind of like a voice. It almost sounds like, you know, when you record yourself and then play it backwards. It almost sounds like that. So what I did was I played it backwards. You know, same thing. Right. So I couldn't, it didn't, would that, that would have been so cool if it was like a backwards voice I played right. and actually said something. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, I can't exactly tell what it's saying, though. If anything, uh, it's too quick. It's it is it's very quick. I even tried slowing it down, and that didn't really help. It kind of just distorted it. It was probably just because you you had it on the, the yeah, and then, but even and with, then there he was like starting to talk, and he's like, "All right, fine then." Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> it well, moved on. Know, it's funny because I was like, "Man, I'm telling you, it's a bunch of BS." And then after that, right. 
it's like, oh, well, I'm going to prove him wrong. Yeah. And then he says something. But like I said, it could very well he be said, He starts to talk, and then it keeps channeling through the station. So he's like, all right, I want to talk to you anyway. Dude. <laughs> he was going to talk on that certain frequency. On a certain frequency. Yeah. <laughs> but then it automatically changes. Yeah, like, well, changed. fine then. Yeah. But I don't Screw know. you guys then. To me, it sounds like a voice. It sounds like you're saying two words. I have no idea what they are. It almost sounds like you slut. <laughs> but it's probably not that. It's probably not. He's definitely talking to me then. Yes. Was, yeah. Because Gary was being very. Uh... Or it's because of the tampon. <laughs> they thought it was mine. Yeah. It was Theodora. She's like, you know, I definitely clean this room. What that if it is was, your tampon. What if it was like a malevolent spirit of the hotel that was talking to Theodora, the other spirit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Calling her a filthy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, calm down over there. Yeah, never mind. (laughs) But I don't know. If you guys can hear anything, like I said, I'm going to play it a few different times. Uh, Definitely let us know. If you think it says anything, let us know. Um, But, yeah, I think think that's all we have for this week. Uh, Hopefully we'll come back in a couple weeks and we'll record a real episode. I got a pretty good idea for it. So we will see. Please you. leave a rating or review yes, we will wherever you can. That. Yes. Leave a rating review. Uh, a little announcement I'll probably announce in the next full episode too, just in case people don't listen to this one, is uh, we're on iHeartRadio now. Ooh. Oh, really? So that's just another nice. place you can listen to us. Um, one of my friends was complaining that uh, people had to download a certain app to listen to us. And you really don't. If you have an iPhone, um, you... You definitely yeah. have the Apple Podcasts right, app. Right, which is standard. And then if you have an Android, you most likely have the Google Play app. And you can listen to this podcast on either of those. So if you tell your friends about us, you'd be like, yeah, you can already listen to them right now on your phone without downloading anything. Yeah, and if you have any comments or concerns or any suggestions, you can email us at snipehuntpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, yeah. snipehuntpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. So we will be talking to you soon yes stay um if you stay at the Gresson hotel if you have any ghostly experience definitely let us know uh unfortunately we did not other than the voice but you know uh we never know when we might head back and you never know when you might run into some more frightening folklore Ooh, that's good Once again, we want to thank you for listening to Snipe Hunt. Your listening has been noted and will be reported to the proper authorities. All audio used was done so under the protection of fair use. Logo design is by Ethan Rothfuss. The music used for this episode was composed by Mayu in Nature World 1986. We'll continue to search for the unexplained and we'll hopefully see you on the next hunt.